Um, on this first weekend of June, I just invite you to warm up for worship with us with How Great Is Our God and um, just get ready for a wonderful service.
Opening music with Alexa and John. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are welcome here. People online, you are welcome here. It's air conditioned, it's a nice, but for those of you who cannot be here, we, uh, we worship with you and praise God for your presence online this morning. Well, this past Sunday, we had our Memorial Day picnic. One of the best parts of it was the fried chicken. <laughs> and you thought I was going to say baptisms, weren't you? The baptisms were amazing. We had like a dozen folks come forth to be immersed in the old salty Gulf of Mexico, but they came up clean in Jesus Christ our Lord. Even, yeah, praise God. We even had an opportunity with some folks who weren't even part of the church that you could just see the Spirit of God moving in them as they were standing and they were like this. Like, should I go? I don't know. Should I go? I don't know. And they came and they, they were obedient to the Holy Spirit in them and we just pray for their, their lives and their souls with Christ Jesus as well. So, someone said, hey, is it a nice quiet summer? And I said, No. We have a lot going on. Uh, we've got all types of new events. We, uh, they're included in the bulletin. You're going to have to check them out. Find something that you want to plug in and participate because by, by plugging in and joining into these activities is where you get to meet and know others uh, in, a, in a meaningful way. So I encourage you to do that. Also, I'd like to encourage you, BBS is coming. If you have ever worked vacation Bible school in your life, would you raise your hand? God bless you. <laughs> VBS, we have nearly 100 kids that are going to descend upon this campus. We are going to transform all three buildings into a, a beach oasis. So our job is now to start building a wave of prayer. Prayer for strength for the volunteers, and a prayer that, that the children and their parents will be received and feel and know Jesus Christ as Lord. So join with me in your prayer life of lifting up Vacation Bible School. Well, with that, we have some a few youth who are representing our uh, youth mission trip, which is going to New Orleans. I guess people in the know call it Nolans. Is that how you say it? They're going to New Orleans. They're, they're uh, gathering together. So kids, if you, are you here? Ah, here we go. Come on up. They are working with Adventures and Missions there in New Orleans where there will be activities such as uh, VBS, water, uh, uh, sharing the gospel message. There's all types of great activities. And these are the individuals who are coming. I will turn it over to Megan, who is our youth director at the end. Megan? Yes. Um, am I on? Yeah. It's, it's a tricky thing. It's called on-off. <laughs> am I on? It's a tricky thing. It's called on-off. One more time. Just keep tapping. Yeah. Test, test. 
Hello? Oh, there we go. Yay, it's working. We can figure it out. Well, thank you so much. I'm Megan. I'm the youth director here, and I have the privilege of working with our students here. Um, and we have the awesome opportunity to, to head to New Orleans. And so we'll be leaving this Friday, and we'll be back the following Thursday. Um, we'll be partnering with Adventures and Missions um, to do lots of work there. Um, and so thank you so much for, for your support and all of your prayers. Um, this trip wouldn't happen without you guys, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, just extending your hand out, and we're going to pray over these students and commission them out. Father God, we thank you um, for your sovereignty and your providence in, in these students' lives. Lord, I pray that you would fill them um, with your love. Holy Spirit, would you ignite within them um, to give them strength and boldness as they serve. Um, I thank you that they are a, a part of the kingdom of heaven, and they are, they are going out to plant seeds and, and to invite more in. Um, so Lord, would you um, stir within them, even, even words as they share their testimonies and as they share the gospel with others, um, and as they share the love of Christ with each person that they meet. Lord God, would you bless this trip and, and draw them nearer to yourselves. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, let's send them off with some applause, shall we? Thank you, kids. Well, just in case, we are practicing to be the friendliest church this side of the Atlantic Ocean. It's a big area, but I think we can do it if we practice by standing, turning to our neighbors and saying good morning. Claim our faith 
through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
So let us go before the Lord in prayer. Would you please join me? Heavenly Father, we all come before you in your, in your throne room of grace and mercy. We come seeking your face to be reminded again that you alone are worthy of our worship. To be reminded again of your great love through grace and mercy of Jesus Christ in our lives. Lord, we come before you reminding us once again that you are the eternal everlasting Lord. There is nothing before you and you will go on forever and ever. And in that you are consistent that you would love all humanity. Lord, we come before you carrying joys, Excitement in our lives, the good news, the assurance of our salvation, we give you thanks. And we also come with burdens on our hearts where we are not well, where we have pending medical surgeries. Lord, we pray for knees and repairs that are about to happen and hearts eyes and all the, the various parts, we, we ask for your presence with the doctors and staff. Lord, we, we pray for our loved ones. We pray for those whom we love that are not here with us. We pray for those whom we love that are outside of Jesus Christ. They are a burden on our hearts, and we ask that, that someone would be in a place to influence their lives. Give us the winsome words of love that we can share in a meaningful way what we have experienced through Christ Jesus. Lord, our, con our families and our country are so divided. We ask for unison. We ask that that, that the, the very name of Jesus be the, the very thing that joins us together again. That we would be one nation under God. And that we would be, as you have called us to be in your Holy Scripture, a light unto all nations. Not out of wealth or military might, but out of our love for one another through Christ Jesus. Lord, we pray for Pastor John as he, he brings the message today. We know that he has, he has prepared his words. Let them be in us a transformational moment that we can carry from this holy place into our lives. Don't just let it be a good talk, but Change our hearts, O oh God. Allow us to choose our words carefully. Because in our words is life. And that life through Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. In this attitude of worship, Let's invite the ushers forward as we give of our tithes and offerings. Ushers. Oh. 
Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, touch through me. Holy Spirit, touch through me. Let my hands reach out to others. Touch through me. There's a lonely soul somewhere needing just one friend to care. Touch through me, Holy Spirit, touch through me. And love through me, Holy Spirit, love through me. Hearts are hurting deep inside, and love can dry their weeping eyes. Love through me, Holy Spirit, love through me. Father, we return to you a portion of the abundance you have shed upon our lives. We ask that you would receive this and bless it and multiply it for your kingdom's sake and for the name of Christ Jesus in our hearts, in our homes, and around this world. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Our scripture today is from three different passages. First one is Proverbs 18.21. It says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Genesis 1, 1 through 3 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. 
and there was light. James 3, 7 and 8 says, All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning once again. Welcome to worship. And if you're with us online, we appreciate you being with us. If you're one of our northern friends watching us today, know that it is cold and rainy in Venice, Florida, right? right. So today we are finishing our sermon series called Street Smarts, Common Sense According to God's Word. So let's briefly go back to where we've been. Week one, we talked about acquiring wisdom, and the first step of doing that is putting ourselves under God's awesome presence, where we acknowledge Him as the Lord and Creator of our life, and that He is so awesome, and that we understand what the fear of the Lord is, and so we develop wisdom. Then we went to the book of Proverbs, and we talked about the proverb that said, above all else, guard your heart, because it's the wellspring of life. And then we talked about the next step in acquiring wisdom from the book of Proverbs was going before God and acknowledging that our humanness, that we can't do it, that we need to be under His Lordship to acquire this wisdom. And so today then, we are going to be talking about wisdom that comes from the Bible, from the book of Proverbs, when it comes to the words that God has us speak with our voices. And so, as we do so today, we want to uh, remember that God has given us this gift of speech, and He gives it to us to use to His greater glory. Now, um, when I first started seminary, I'll never forget one of my first classes was a preaching class. Up until that point, I had never stood up and preached in front of a congregation. I was always at an organ, and so I was always kind of in the background. So when God called me into pastoral ministry, it was very different. And I'll never forget that first night, that first class, the professor looking at us and saying, I have two scriptures for you to memorize as ministers of the gospel and take to heart. And the first one was this. It was from the book of James chapter 3, and it says this. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. And then he followed it up with Matthew 12 that said this, 
But I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words, you will be acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned. And so what he meant to bring and what I've remembered to this day is that that God has given us this incredible gift of His Word. And it is that an incredible gift. And we are to use it to His greater glory. And we are to use it in accordance with His Holy Spirit to bring life and love to a world that is in so much need. Now, there's something else that, that we did that night that seems kind of elementary, but i, I got to do it with you today. So I need two wise people. And one of the wisest people that I've ever known... Oh, Pastor Bob, come here. All right. All right. Can I have another wise person? Let's see, who would be wise? Oh, well, we have a wise, beautiful singing intern. Alexa, come over here, please. All right. Didn't she do a wonderful job leading today? Thank you. Yes. Okay. So after he said those scriptures, he he got a plate out and he invited us up and he got two of us and he said, okay, I've got a task for you. It's two-folded. And we're going to see which of you wise people can fulfill this task. So the first thing he said was, open the tube of toothpaste and I want you to squeeze it all out on the plate. All right, Bob, you're a little rusty there. All right. All right. So the next part of this challenge is this. So you wise people, now I'd like you to get the toothpaste and put it all back in the tubes. And he said to us, when we speak words, once they're out, they're out. When we speak the word of God, what a responsibility is. So think diligently and quickly. Thank you so much. All right? All right. Thank you. See, but but you see, my brothers and sisters, our our words are like that. Once they're out, they're out. And and so we have to understand that, that the Bible says to us that words are powerful. And so today I want to take, talk about an aspect of our lives that goes largely unnoticed. There is a connection, the Bible says, between our language and our spiritual condition. But I contend sometimes that this is an area of our life that we constantly need wisdom for God to help us navigate it well. And so the book of Proverbs helps with this. You know, There's another scripture from 2 Timothy that says, you know, we use the word of God to teach, to rebuke, to to exhort. But, you know, whether it's we're speaking the word of God to help someone, to encourage someone, or to move them out of sin, we have to do it, as the Bible says, with careful instruction. And that instruction comes from the Holy Spirit. So let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 21. We're told that the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. You see, we're, we're unique in created order that we're able to communicate words with one another. And, 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 and as human beings, we have this, this sophisticated way of communicating, and we've been given these words, but they're powerful. And the Scriptures tell us that these words are powerful because they hold the power of life and death. Now, I I want you to look at a few words. I'm going to put uh, two different screens up. But this first, I want you to look at these words, and and as I read them, just kind of get an impression of what is this doing to your spirit. Dumb, stupid, crazy, fat, worthless. Now, let's speak these words. Loved, smart, redeemed, accepted, valuable. Do you notice how your emotions kind of shifted inside of you as you saw those two words? You know, we speak about 16,000 words every day. And and some of those words are, are what I call throwaway words. 
But, but when we have the Word of God and we're speaking for God and we're speaking the wisdom of God, we have to say things that are accordant with His will and His work. And, and those can be words that, that, that will build up. And, and this wisdom that we use, and God will use our words to transform. So let's look at this. First of all, that words hold the power of life. The very first place we see this in the Bible, at the very beginning of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, let's go and look at that scripture again. It says this, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. It takes place in this narrative. This Hebrew writer depicts for us that God created all that we know and see using words. He, He speaks the world into being. And so in these first three verses, we see a pattern emerge that is carried on throughout the the chapters of of the Genesis. God speaks, and it's formed. God commands, and it takes place. And God invites, and there is a response. And so, as creatures who are made in the image of God, we too have been given the power to speak life. You've been given this power, and so in those 16,000 words we speak a day to build, to create, and to give life. Now, one of, one of the things that, that I think we have to understand, like I've said this whole series, is in our humanness sometimes, we, we don't naturally do this because our humanness can take us different places. That's a very elementary example, but I remember when, when, when my son was, was five, six years old and he started playing soccer. Now, I've got to tell you, I grew up in an Italian neighborhood and we never heard of soccer or football. We just played stickball in the street. Okay? Yeah. But I'll never forget, you know, you know just, just kind of not thinking about my words. And so, you know, there you are, and, and, and you got your kid, and you're there, and I'm on the sidelines doing what everybody else is doing. Yeah, keep going. No, faster, slower. Why'd you do that? And that's the way I was the whole season. And, it, it just, and so at the end of the season, they're having the little, the little, they're having the little party, and, and my son goes up to the coach, and, and he puts his arm, and he says, Coach... He said, you're the best coach I've ever had. Now, he was the only coach he's ever had at that point. But, <laughs> but, but, but he said, and so the coach looked down and he looked at him and he said, well, well, why is that? And he said, well, you know, when we're doing good, you tell us we're doing good. And, and when we're not, you tell us, but, but you show us how to, how to fix that. And, and he said, but most of all, every game, you tell us that you're proud of us. Wow. And I thought about all my words during that season, and did I ever tell him I was proud of him? So I went home and didn't talk for three days. Okay? But you see, you know, sometimes it's just not natural, and then we hear something like that, and we see how it, how it grips somebody, and how important that was. And you notice what he said, and I think that, that this comes with the Scriptures too, is that, that, you know, we use the Word of God to inspire, to, to uh, build up, and, and sometimes we use it to correct, but when we do it to correct, we don't do it to damn somebody, we do it to get them on the right path, and what we do is we, we put them in God's presence, and He does that. He transforms them. But these words have the power of of life, and and, and so I think that that's one thing that as we go forward, we have to understand that sometimes our human nature is to go other ways. Now, but words hold the power of life. Now, I said to you also that words hold the power of death. Now, there's some of us in this room this morning who know exactly what this feels like. 
Somewhere along the line, someone may have used words full of power to wound you. Maybe some of us in this room have been collateral damage from someone who wielded their words as a weapon. Maybe some of us have been living our lives for years trying to prove someone's words wrong. Some of us in this room have self-sabotaged our life because we were told or that, that we're not worthy or that we're not any good. And some of us refuse to respond to the invitation of God because we still can't actually believe that He would love us. Remember when you were a kid and, and you, you heard about words and offensive words and we said that saying, sticks and stones may break my but words will never. That's whoever said that was not, that, that's not true. Words can. It's simply not true. And so that's where we go now. To the book of James. See, James is, is writing this letter to the early church and, and, and he's, he's trying to instruct them on how to live the life that God has created for us in the way that the Scriptures say, in the way that God would have us go. Those street smarts I keep talking about. And, and, and so James it talks about the power of the tongue and our voices and how that, that, that it can be a stumbling block. So James says this, he says, all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue it is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. And what James was, was saying that is to, to those people, and what the Scriptures say to us today is that in and of ourselves, we can't tame our tongue. But God can. And so when we are called to speak, especially speak in His stead, we have to call on the power of the Holy Spirit for His words of inspiration. You know, our words can be a restless evil and a deadly poison, but they also can be those words that give life. That very same seminary professor said to us at the end of that class, if you are going to speak, speak Jesus. Speak Jesus. You know, there's a, a Jewish author, rabbi, by the name of Abraham Heschel, who, who gave this observation. And he says this, he said, Words are themselves sacred, God's tool for creating the universe. So if you think back to that scripture in Genesis, the words are God's tool. But he goes on to say this, And our tools for either bringing holiness or evil into the world. It's your choice. And so what I would say is, if you have been given this gift, know that God uses us to use our words to build life, to encourage. And when we're in situations where we're dealing with sin, yes, He gives us this word to help address sin. But He says, do it in a manner that I'm inspiring you to do that will help that person transform, not alienate, but transform to the truth that we read in the Scriptures. But as Heschel said, it's, it's your choice. We still have that free will. And so, I often think back on the, on the last 28, 40, 24, 48 hours of, of my life and, and the importance of language. When I think about those 16,000 words each day, I think, God, have I honored you with those words? Have you spoke, what have I spoke into being? And you know, as, as a pastor, it's a sobering thought. As I have interactions with people in and outside of our church, I have to ask myself, how did I respond, address, encourage someone else that may be living in a world that I just created for them? And so, 
I believe that if we change our language, if we guard our hearts like Proverbs said, if we use that humility that we talked about when we talked about the fear of the Lord, that, 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 that God's wisdom encapsulates our life. And when we do that, we're, we're a new creation. Our legacy has changed. And so we find that street smarts, wisdom comes from receiving God's Word for us so that we can give those wonderful words of life to others. As a counselor, a large part of my life, in addition to being a pastor, was just being a counselor. And I've I got to tell you, in, in secular counseling, we have a license, and so there's sometimes there are limits of what we can say or what we do when it comes to things like religion and spirituality and stuff like that. And so very early on in my career, I worked for a lot of secular agencies until I started my own, which was a Christian counseling agency. But I got to tell you, something happened in those early years that transformed my life and my use of words, and it stuck with me. I want to share that with you. I had a man that, that called me and, and asked me if he could become a patient of mine. And I was full, but I just felt like the Holy Spirit saying, okay, you should do this. So I took him on and great. He was about in his mid-50s and, you know, his life was a mess. I mean, he told me, he confessed that he had ignored his family. He had stepped out on his wife many times. He, he was he succumbed to alcohol and things like that. And here he was now at a point in his life where he said that he wanted to get help. But he said, you know, he said, and I, he said, John, he said, I even went to church on Sunday and I found myself at the rail. And he said, I knelt down there and I, I tried to feel God's presence. And he said, but there was just something blocking that. And, and, you know, so he starts talking about religious things, and I'm getting a little uncomfortable because I'm not supposed to talk about religious things. So I started talking more about clinical things, about his symptoms, about how to work through his symptoms. And so I could tell that this man was very, very emotional, but he had come to that point where he realized his sin, and he realized that he needed help and he realized that he wanted the life that God had prepared for him. And I'll never forget as he went to the door, and I brought him to the door and, and shook his hand and got his next appointment, I felt the Holy Spirit on my shoulder saying, say it, say it, say it. I'm like, I don't think I can say it. And I said it. I said to him, I said, I want you to know that God loves you and that you're a good man. Later that evening, I got a call from the man and his wife. And he called me after hours, and so I, for some reason I, I picked up my phone in the office. And his wife said to me, Mr. Giuliano, I just want to thank you. Mark and I want to thank you for your time today, for taking him on as a patient. I said, well, you know, thank you. I appreciate that. She says, no. She says, you don't understand what your words have done. And Mark said this to me. He said, when you shook my hand, he said, you said God loves you. He said, I've heard that before. He said, but you said something else. And when you said it, I finally felt the power of the Holy Spirit. And I said, what, what exactly was that? And he said, when you said to me, you're a good man. He said, something happened. You affirmed that I repented. You affirmed that I, I was seeking help. And, 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 and you said, I'm a good man. And his wife said, but he's not telling you the real reason why we called. She said, when he left your office, he had a loaded pistol in his truck. And when he came home, he brought it in and he gave it to me. 
Now, that was, i got to tell you, the reason why I share that with you, those weren't my words. Those were the words of the Holy Spirit. And so when I think about, about, about the power of our words and the power of God changing lives, transforming lives, that's the power that we're dealing with. And so as we go forth today, I pray that, that, that as we bring this whole series of street smarts together, that we would just cherish our words and the words that God gives us. And whether we're doing speaking to encourage or uplift, or, or whether sometimes we use words to correct or put things back into for the way they should be, we have to be very careful about the, the privilege that God has given us. So I want to give you some next steps. I want to give you some, some favorite passages that, that you can use when, when you think, Lord, how, how, how can I encourage someone who's, who's lost or someone who's hurting or, or somebody who's in sin? Well, here's, here's, here's my, my list. First one is this. While you were yet sinners, Christ died for you because He loves you. Powerful. How about this one? You are the children of God. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. You are a new creation. And the very Spirit of God lives and dwells inside of you. Would you bow your heads? God, our Heavenly Father, we thank You so much for Your Word, for Your Scriptures, and for, for the street smarts that we have learned this past four weeks. And I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will continue to infuse these truths in our lives and in our hearts that we may be that transformation for the world and that we may live according to Your Gospel, to Your Word, and to Your Holy Spirit to bring truth and wisdom. We ask this in Your name. Amen. Pastor Bob. Message. It is a Methodist tradition that Holy Communion is open to everyone. John Wesley calls it a means of grace. It's a way that God works in us and draws us to Him. So everyone is welcome to receive. We, we distribute stacked plastic cups. On the bottom cup is the bread. On the top cup is the juice. When you receive it, if you would hold it till the end, we will all take the elements at the same time. And if you happen to need gluten-free, uh, just raise your hand while it's being distributed, and we have an usher assigned to seek you out. So with all of that, let us go to the Lord for His Holy Communion. On the night in which Jesus gave Himself up for us, He took the bread, and having given thanks, He broke it and gave it to His disciples, saying to each, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper had ended, he took the cup. And after he gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many and for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifices in union with Christ's offering for us. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through Your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, in Your holy church, our honor and glory is Yours.
Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, I invite the ushers forward. The body of Christ, broken for you, take and eat. The blood of Christ, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin, take and drink. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your presence in these elements and in us. May we live a life worthy. Amen. Amen. Let us stand as we sing our closing hymn.
beautiful word, wonderful word, wonderful words of life. Beautiful word, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the And now, let us read our benediction together as we go forth now into this world. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and now Redeemer. And now, I pray that you would go forth this day empowered with the Word of God in your heart, the wisdom of His knowledge in your mind, in His Holy Spirit that fires your very soul. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all God's people shall say the word.